Welcome back to the Python programming specialization course. In the last lecture, we have seen the details about the list data structure, which is the most commonly used data structure in Python. In today's lecture, we will see the details about tuple, another important data structure in Python. So, in, in this lecture, we will discuss how to create a tuple, what is a tuple, how to create a tuple, then what are the operations that can be applied on tuple, including what are the various methods that can be applied on the tuple to process it. Let us start our discussion with an understanding of what tuples are. So, tuples are basically lists with immutable objects. That is similar to list, tuple also allows us to have a collection of elements which is a compound data structure uh, which allows you to store collection of different data objects. You can have numbers, you can have floating point numbers, you can have strings, even other complex data types like lists, tuples and dictionaries also. But the objects in the tuple are immutable. That is once you create the tuple, it is not possible to alter it. So, here I have created a tuple T4 with collection of 4 integer elements and once I create this, it is not possible to add new elements, delete the existing elements or update the existing elements. That is how tuples are lists with immutable objects. Now let us see how do we create the tuples. Creation of empty tuples can be done in one of these two ways where you can use either the tuple constructor or we can simply assign an empty parenthesis to the tuple variable. While creation of the tuple with single element, you should be little careful. That is when you create a tuple with single element like this T3 equal to 10 enclosed within parenthesis, then it is treated as an integer rather than a tuple by Python. So, to make it as a tuple, you need to, uh, you need to add a comma at the end while creation of a tuple with single element. So, now you are object T3 is treated as tuple rather than as an integer. So, creation of non-empty tuples is similar to the creation of lists except that the collection of elements are enclosed within uh, parenthesis rather than the square brackets. So, that is how creation of empty tuples, singleton tuples and non-empty tuples can be done using by enclosing them within the uh, parenthesis and separating the individual elements with a comma. So, here you can observe a homogeneous tuple where all the elements in this tuple T1 are of integer type. So, now you can have a look at the tuple which is of float, floating type. Now, you can have a look at another homogeneous tuple where all the elements are of type float. So, here is an example for the tuple with all the elements as strings. So, T3 is a tuple with all the elements are of type strings. Now, you can see here a heterogeneous type. So, the first three tuples are of type homogeneous where all the elements are of the same type. The first one is with integers, the second one with the floating point numbers, the third one with the strings. But now, I have a heterogeneous tuple T4 which includes some of them are strings, then few of them are integers. I even have uh, floating point numbers as elements in the tuple T4. So, that is how we can create tuples of homogeneous and the heterogeneous type. Now, let us see how do we create the nested tuple. Similar to the nested list, it is possible to create the nested tuple. So, nested tuple is a tuple where one tuple can be included as an element in the other tuple. So, such tuples are known as the nested tuples. Here you can observe T1 is a nested tuple where it includes an element as a tuple itself. If you observe 60, 70 is in turn a tuple, moreover it is an element of the tuple T1. So, such tuples are known as a nested tuples as one tuple is nested inside the other tuple. Now, let us see another powerful feature that comes with tuples that is unpacking of tuples. So, Python offers a powerful assignment tool with tuples. So, here if you observe this operation is known as packing as we are assigning collection of elements to the tuple object. So, the assigning of a collection of elements to a tuple object is known as packing and unpacking is the reverse of that where a tuple object can be assigned to individual elements. So, with this operation 
a comma b comma c equal to t1 whatever the individual elements that are available in t1 that is 10 20 30 they will be assigned to the variables a b c so after the execution of this statement a b c equal to t1 a gets the value 10 b gets the value 20 and c gets the value 30 so that is what the unpacking and packing of the elements with regard to the tuple data structure so now we understand how do we create various types of tuples. So let us see how do we access the tuple elements. Once the tuple is created, we need to understand how the elements are accessed. So let us see how do we do that. So if you want to access, so tuple access is exactly same as the list uh, accessing. So here I have T1 with collection of integers of uh, 5 numbers. 10, 20, 30, 40 and 50. When you want to access the entire tuple, you can refer to its name and you can access the entire list itself. When you want to access a single element, you can use the index operator that is a square bracket and you can pass the index to it to get a single element. Here T1 of 0, it indicates that we are trying to access the element at the index 0. That is how we can access a single element from the tuple. Now let us see how do we access multiple elements. We can use a slicing operator like this to access multiple elements from the tuple. So here in this example T1 of 2 colon 5 colon 2, it allows you to access the elements from the second index up to fourth index every alternate element within that range. So that is how tuple allows us to access multiple elements using the slicing operator. Now let us see what are the various operations that can be applied on tuple. So with regards to the following operations, tuple and list works in the same manner. So we already seen that creation of the uh, tuple is exactly the same as creation of the list except that we are enclosing the collection of elements in a parenthesis in case of the tuples whereas in case of the list we are enclosing them in a uh, square brackets, right. Then accessing is also the same. In case of the tuple we are using uh, the index operator to access a single element, slicing operator uh, to access multiple elements. That is what we are doing in case of the lists also. Moreover, usage of the operators is also the same as that of the lists. Now let us see what are the operators that can be used with tuples. So these are all the list of operators that can be used with tuples. We already seen with examples how to use the index operator to access a single element, slicing operator to access multiple elements. Then the plus is the operator which is used to concatenate different uh, tuples. Then asterisk is the operator which is used to repeat a tuple for n number of times. In and not in are two membership operators that allows you to understand the presence of the given element in the tuple or not. And similarly, del is the other operator which allows you to delete the entire tuple. So we already have discussed that tuples are immutable, right? So that means once you create the tuple, it is not possible to alter the elements of the tuple or the tuple object itself, it is not possible to alter. Additions, deletions, updations are not valid on the tuple. So because of that reason, only few of the methods that can be used with the tuple. We can use the count method to understand how many times a given element is repeated in the. We can use the index method to understand at what position the given element is available in the tuple. That is how tup, with the tuple class we have two methods that are available count and index. Now we understand that tuples allows us only limited operations. So it does not allow us to add, delete, update the elements from the tuple. Now let us see what are the built-in methods that can be applied with tuples. So tuple basically allows us to use all the built-in methods that we use with the list. Len can be used to get the size of the tuple, min is used to get the minimum element from the tuple. Similarly, max is used to get the maximum element from the tuple, sum is used to get the total uh, sum of the elements in the tuple whereas all is the method which allows us to understand whether all the elements in the tuple are positive or not that is true or not. Similarly, any is the method which allows us to understand is there any existence of true element in the tuple or not. So tuple is the method which is used to create a, an empty tuple or even to convert any other iterator to the. 
So, tuple data structure. So, you, rem you remember sorted is the method that cannot be applied on the tuple. Now, let us see how do we iterate over the tuples. When the individual elements of the tuple are to be traversed, we need to use for loop. So, here I have a tuple T1 with collection of integers 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 and 60. Then if I would like to traverse each element of the tuple, then I need to use a for loop for i in T1. So, print of i. So, here this for loop allows us to iterate over all the elements in the tuple. So, that is for the first time when I repeat this loop, the first element of T1 is passed to i, then the set of statements in the for loop will be executed. Similarly, in the next iteration, the second element 20 is copied to i and with that value, the list of elements would be executed. That is how, so till the last element of the tuple T1 is reached, that is at the last iteration of this for loop, the element 60 is copied to i and the set of statements of the for loop would be executed. That is how it is possible to iterate over the list and you can uh, process the tuple whatever the operations you want to perform on a tuple. Now let us see how do we delete the tuples. In case of the tuples as they are immutable it is not possible to delete any particular element from the tuple. Even multiple elements also cannot be deleted. Only way is you can delete the entire tuple including its structure and similar to the list we can use the del operator to delete the entire list T1 along with its structure. Here, if you use this del operator with the tuple T1, then the T1 is deleted including its structure. That is how you can delete the tuple in Python. Now, let us see how do we use comparison operators with tuples. Of course, it is possible to compare two given tuples. You can use equal to symbol, greater than, less than, all these comparison operators, they can be used with the tuples. So, let us have this example. Here I have T1 and T2 with the same set of elements and here I am applying the equality operator on T1 and T2. As the tuples T1 and T2, they have equal number of elements. Moreover, the elements in T1 and T2, they are all the same. That is why the comparison is returning a true value. Now, let us see this example where T1 and T2 are having different elements. Now, I am going to apply a comparison operator greater than. In this case, it returns true. The reason is it works like this. First, so 7 and 5 are compared because 7 is greater than 5. It goes to the next element. Of course, 12 and 6, it is comparing 12 and 6. Then 12 is greater than 6. So, that is also true. Then it goes with the next element as all the elements of T1 are greater when compared to the elements of T2. So, T1 greater than T2 returns a true value. Now, let us have this case study. So, where T1 and T2 are having different elements where the first element is the same. So, in this case, uh, I am going to compare the operation greater than with T1 and T2. In that case, the first element of T1 and T2 are compared 5 is greater than 5. So, it cannot conclude. So, it proceeds to the next element 2 and 6. Of course, 2 and 6 is false. So, because the condition is failing, so it returns a false value. So, that is how you can use the comparison operators with tuples. Now, let us see what is the difference between tuples and lists. So, we have seen so many similarities with lists and tuples. Now, let us see how they are different and in what cases you need to prefer uh, tuples and in which applications you need to consider lists. So, the first and foremost is lists are mutable. That is, it is possible to alter the data structure once it is created. So, you can add new elements, you can delete existing elements, you can update the elements, you can remove the elements. So, all these alterations are possible in case of lists. That is why they are known as the mutable data structures. Whereas, tuples are known as immutable data structures as it is not valid to alter the elements of the data structure. That is how tuples are immutable data structures. So, coming to the memory perspective, so list takes more memory when compared to the tuple. So, you can check this by creating a list and tuple with equal number of elements and using the size of operator with the list and tuple. You can observe that list will take little more memory when compared to the tuple. Even if you create list and tuple with the same elements also, you can observe that. Lists are less efficient when compared to the tuples because list takes more memory when compared to the tuples and moreover processing with list is 
bit slower when compared to the tuples as lists are mutable whereas tuples are immutable and list provides us a lot of operations so that it is possible to alter list in many different uh, ways but whereas coming to the tuple it is not possible to alter very limited access is provided with tuple to alter it and very limited number of operations are possible on the tuple data structure. So, that is the reason why lists are less efficient when compared to the tuples and because of these reasons. So, when your data is very small then it is uh, better to prefer the list data structure whereas, if you have large data to process in your application then it is better to prefer the tuple data structure over the list data structure. So, one more important point to be noted is lists are error prone whereas, tuples are less error prone. This is also due to the number of operations that we are allowing on the lists. So, lists are more error prone and tuples are less error prone. In this lecture, we have discussed what tuples are, how do we create them, what are the operations that can be applied on tuples, what are the various built in methods that can be applied on tuples. Moreover, one powerful tool that is unpacking and packing of the elements that we have discussed in case of tuples. At the end, we have given the intuitive uh, overview of when to prefer less and when to prefer tuples. In what applications you have to prefer tuples over the less, less over the tuples. Now, I hope you understand in detail about the list and the tuple data structure, when to use which of these two. Thank you, thank you for watching this video.